you take yourself the whole hour, buddy? Uh, okay. Are we on? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, covalent bonding. Now, ionics always have to be solid because of that, that very strict arrangement that they have to keep. Metals, you know, are almost all solid. How many exceptions? How many metals do you know of that are not solid? One. There's one, yeah, mercury. Every other metal is a solid. Mercury is an oddball. I can't tell you why mercury is a liquid. Covalent, covalently bonded compounds could be solid, liquid, or gas, depending on the attraction these molecules have for one another. These molecules hold together by a very specific bonding arrangement, but then from this molecule to this molecule, are they attracted? If they are, then uh, they'll, they'll be probably a solid or a liquid. Do you know if water molecules are attracted to each other? Absolutely. What kind of attraction do they have? Hydrogen bonding. There's hydrogen bonding and another one, another type of attraction that starts with a P. Oh, polar. And it's polar bonding, right. Also known as dipole, right? Um, but we'll talk about that in this chapter. But yeah, water molecules, because they're polar, one side is positive, one side is negative, there is that attraction of, of, of partial charges. What about oxygen? Are oxygen molecules attracted to each other? No. What no. evidence do you have that oxygen uh, molecules are not very attracted to each other? Oh, London dispersion forces. A little bit, but they're, they're not very pronounced because it's a gas. You can put oxygen out by itself and then those particles will not stick to each other. They'll get near each other, bounce off, or go on uh, their own way because uh, there's not a whole lot of attraction. Yeah. To a, one another, right, and they'll bond, but then the molecules are, are not attracted. Mike, understand the difference. Yep. Look for a question if it says oxygen atoms versus oxygen molecules. That's a big difference. An oxygen atom is very unstable. An oxygen molecule is more stable than an oxygen atom. Good call on that, Nick. You hear that, aren't you? Oxygen atom, oxygen molecule. I'm not making fun of you. We talked about, you know, you need to care for what you're taking on it. Okay, I'm going to just skip over this. Um, the last thing that I wanted to do, and now we have about 10 minutes, I just have two slides. After this, we get right into covalent bonding, and we focus on covalent for the next five lecture days. One very specific type of covalently bonded compound is called a network solid. In a network solid, you have atoms that are bonded to other things around them, and those other things are bonded to other things around them. And those other things are bonded to other things around them. So what happens is a covalently bonded network solid is one big molecule, big molecule, of millions of atoms uh, all bonded to one another. You're probably aware of diamond and yep. the unique properties of diamond. How in pure carbon, Every carbon is attached to four other carbons because carbon has four bonding electrons. It can make four bonds. So it makes a single bond to four other carbons. All four of those other carbons are bonded to other carbons with single bonds. And they just perpetuate out, makes a macromolecule that has a serious um, uh, strength, hardness to it, and a very, very um, stable substance. Yes, sir? Yeah, I don't know if it's hydrogen on the surface. That's a great question. It's something worth looking into. Is it just carbons on the surface maybe making a double bond with their neighboring carbon uh, to just finish it off? It may be just carbons on the outside. Yeah. Sometimes, by the way, a diamond may trap uh, trace amounts of a transition metal like chromium or vanadium. Oh. That'll change the color of the diamond. You might get a yellow diamond or a red diamond. Those are possible. I don't know about a red diamond, but I know yellow diamonds are possible. Um, what other colors of diamonds are there? Blue. There's blue diamonds, like in this movie Titanic. It's blue diamond. Black? Black diamond? Like a diamond in the sky? Yeah, 
you use another diamond is to cut diamonds. Yeah. You put diamond in, uh, little bits of diamond into a drill, and then you can cut them. The yeah, because there's like diamonds, like sharp diamonds. Yeah, yeah, diamond, uh, nice sharp yeah. Normally they'll take real small, like scrap diamond uh, that is impure. They don't want to use nice pure diamond. They save that for the new ones. But the impure diamonds they use it uh, a lot of times in industry. Yep. So that's like Yeah. I don't think I know of anything else that will cut diamonds other than diamonds. <laughs> You could get a nice clean edge on it because diamond, you know, it's not going to be part of that, that clean edge, but yeah, it'll, uh, uh, it'll, be it'll go through, yeah. Well, this is the Jesus. No, I mean, you'd have to have the whole sword made out of diamond. You have to have a lot of money to buy that sword. Uh, mine's not a problem. We're just diamonds of money, no problem, yeah, right? Harry. Not for Harry, yeah, you just get the money. No, it's just like theoretical. Uh, Hello. Wait, so can you do this? Does it what? Water jet? I don't know. Water jet would cut diamond? No, because like they, um, you know, like hot metal and stuff, if you shoot like a really high pressure drive, they actually think that. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd be fine with that. Like, but I didn't know they would cut diamond. Yeah, is it bad? Now, for metal, do they use steam or do they use liquid water? I'm not Is it water? For the pressure? Interesting. Yeah, I wonder about uh, diamonds being covered with lasers these days, too. That may be even more effective. And yeah, and for accuracy, and I don't know if it just vaporizes the diamond, the heat of it, or the uh, energy that it provides vaporizes. Good question. Graphite is also a network solid. Graphite, you know, is not strong. Listen. Graphite is not strong like diamond. Um, but it is a network solid because it perpetuates out. Graphite shows up in layers, and that's why graphite is used in pencils, because the friction of you running your pencil across the paper will cause the graphite to kind of rub off, and you'll leave a trace of the, uh, the graphite. These layers are just loosely held together. This one makes a uh, graphite useful in uh, uh, yeah. The last network solid I would mention is sand, also known as silicon dioxide, often by geologists known as silica. Silica. Silicon dioxide is SI with two O's. The SI is black and the O's are red. If you look at this silicon dioxide molecule, the O's can make two bonds, so they're bonded to other silicon atoms, which have two O's on them. They're bonded to other silicon atoms, which has two O's on them, and they perpetuate out. And so a grain of sand is essentially one big molecule of silicon dioxide. So network solids are typically very hard substances with high melting points. Why would they have a high melting point? Because in order to get these molecules to flow around one another, you literally have to break covalent bonds. You're not just breaking attractions in between getting to, to wiggle more. You've got to break the bonds. It takes a huge amount of energy. So I have a multiple choice question up on the board. It's been up there all hour. Somebody went and circled it. There's no answer, though. Watch out moment. Uh, let's reason through this thing and let's hold on a second. Go ahead. You're gonna take D? Okay. But you don't have to have a super hot to melt iron? Okay. I need I think it's CO two guys. Brandon? If they were all covalently bonded. Maybe it would be the molar mass, but we've got all kinds of different bonding in this. CO2 has covalent bonds. Is CO2 a legitimate possible answer? Yes. The no. needs. It's a gas. It's a gas. It's got a very low melting point. Oh, melting, melting means it's got to go from solid to liquid. I don't know what I mean. Not CO2. That's not going to be our winner. 
Because these three things are solid, at least at room temperature, you gotta warm them up above room temperature to get them to melt. CO2 is already melted and vaporized by the time we get to room temperature. Uh, melting. Even if it was boiling point, CO2 will lose. Now listen, NaCl. Do you have to heat NaCl real hot to get it to boil? Yes. To melt, I mean to melt? Yeah. Yeah, how hot? Like a couple thousand degrees Celsius. No, not that hot. Never mind. Sodium chloride is about 800 degrees Celsius. What about iron? 500. Iron is about 1600 degrees Celsius. Oh my god. Now, when you're looking through these uh, on a multiple choice test, this is very sneaky. Because personally, I know what I'm thinking. I'm looking at this, looking at, okay, that's covalent bonding, that's covalent bonding. It can't be those two. It's either one of these, and I know iron's got a real high melting point, it's probably iron. Don't make that mistake. You want to watch out for two specific network solids, silicon dioxide and diamond. You're right. Silicon dioxide has a melting point. I just looked it up a couple hours ago. I'll look it up right now. I think it's about 100 degrees more than iron. Uh, let's take a look. Wait, so it's a network covalent? Here's, uh, this one is sodium chloride. It's about 800 degrees Celsius. You've got to heat sodium chloride up a little hotter than our Bunsen burner can get. Our Bunsen burners will not melt sodium chloride. It's pretty close. And then, uh, let's see, I had it, I think, uh, yeah, here's iron. It's uh, 1,538. So I said 1,600. It's about 1,500. And then, <laughs> silicon dioxide is about 1,600. So I was off. This one is 1,500, and this is 1,600. Could be. I use Wikipedia all the time when I'm trying to find I know some of your teachers like in social studies and English, they curse Wikipedia. I know, I know. It's fine with me. Uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, just watch out. Silicon dioxide can be very sneaky in uh, the way that uh, uh, it can be asked that question. Network solids, very hard in substances, high melting points. Um, it's from Higher than most normal things, yes. So is silicon dioxide a network covalent by any chance? Yeah. Oh, so wouldn't they have to write it as SiXO2X? Yeah, well, I guess what would you say for diamond, CX? Yes. Yeah. No, we just call it C. C in parentheses diamond, and then silicon dioxide is normally we just call it SiO2. Okay. But it's understood, you just have to remember it's a network solid. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and start the 